Hi and welcome to this next video in the probability series, the second video on Venn diagrams where we will go through an example of each of the three different ways of displaying information. Example 1 is a Venn diagram with elements. The first part of the question is asking us to illustrate the natural numbers on a dice in a Venn diagram showing a group of primes for A and a group of evens for B. The second part of the question is asking for the number of elements across several scenarios. So let's start by creating the Venn diagram. First of all, we need to identify that we are dealing with elements, the actual numbers on the dice. Next, we consider how many elements there are in total in the sample space. So all the numbers on a dice make up six elements altogether, and so we start here with a rectangle and the number of elements in the sample space. Now we can draw in our circles representing event A, the prime numbers, and event B, the even numbers. If we now systematically go through the numbers on the dice, we can decide where they each belong. One is neither prime nor even, so it gets placed in the sample space but outside both circles. Two is both prime and even, so it gets placed in the overlap. Three is prime, four is even, five is prime, and six is even. And there is your Venn diagram. Now let's look at the second part of the question. Note here they are asking for the number of elements in each case. There is only the element 2 in the overlap, A and B, so the number of elements in A and B is 1. Then A or B includes all the elements in A and in B and in both A and B, and so that is all these five elements. The number of elements in A only is 2, and the number of elements not in A or B is 1. It is not being asked here, but we can observe that these events are not mutually exclusive because of the element 2 that is both prime and an even number. These events are therefore also not complementary. Example 2 is an example with probabilities. We are first being asked to represent the given probabilities in a Venn diagram, then we're being asked whether these events are mutually exclusive. First let's see what information they have given us. Probability of A or B is 0,8, the probability of B is 0,4, and the probability of A and B is 0,25. We start by creating our sample space and making the probability of the sample space 1, and we fill in our two events. Then we can start by filling in the overlap here of 0,25, then we know the probability of the whole of B is 0,4, which means we need to subtract the overlap to get 0,15 here for B only. Then we're given that A or B is 0,8, which means that what is left for here is 0,8 minus the probability of B, which is then 0,4. Then finally, because A or B is 0,8, and the probability of the full sample space is 1, the remaining probability for outside of A or B will be 1 minus 0,8, which is 0,2. And we write that anywhere in the sample space outside A and B. The second part of the question is asking whether these events are mutually exclusive. We are given in the information that the probability of A and B is 0,25 and so we can conclude that these events are not mutually exclusive because the probability of A and B is not equal to zero. Let's have a look now at the third and final example in this video. This example provides you with data gathered from a poll about what music students liked. If we focus initially on the first question, it asks us to draw a Venn diagram to illustrate all this information. And because this is quite a mouthful, it's best to have a strategy. So, where possible with these types of Venn diagram questions, once you've set up the basic structure, start from the inside and work your way outwards. What is also useful to do is to tick off as you work through each piece of information. Maybe pause the video at this point to give the information provided a read through. 
So starting with the structure, there are three overlapping events in this sample space. Rap with the letter R, jazz with the letter J, and hip hop with the letter H. Also, there were a total of 95 students in the poll. Then using the strategy to work from the middle outwards, it says here that the number in R and J and H is 26, which means the overlap or the intersection of all three events is 26, and so we place 26 here in the middle. Next, we look to see if we can fill any of these areas. It says here that 20 students like rap and hip hop only, and so we put 20 in this section here. It also says that X students like jazz and hip hop only, and so this here is X. Then if we have a look at this statement, 36 students like rap and jazz, the difference with this statement is the word only is not used. In other words, this statement refers to this area here, the whole overlap between rap and jazz, and so 36 minus 26 leaves us with 10 for here. We are ready now to fill in the next layer of information. Let's start with the first statement. 60 students like rap. This means everything in here must add up to 60. The 10 and the 26 and 20 give us 56, and so that leaves 4 to go here. Next, 60 students like jazz, which means this all has to add up to 60, and so 60 minus each of these leaves 24 minus x for here. And 70 students like hip hop, and so what is left for the rest of the hip hop circle is 70 minus each of these, which is 24 minus x. And then the last statement says that five students like neither rap nor jazz nor hip hop. And so we need to place five outside the three circles, but still in the sample space of students from the poll. And that is the Venn diagram. Maybe pause the video again now if you would like to give any of these steps some extra thought. Okay, now that our Venn diagram is complete, we can continue with the rest of the questions. Number two is asking us to show that the value of x is 18. Here we use the overall information given initially that 95 students took part in the poll. This gives us the number in our sample space which means that if we add up each part of the Venn diagram, the total will be 95. So the number of students that like rap is 60 plus 24 minus x plus x, which is just 24, plus 24 minus x plus 5, and this all equals 95. And this simplified gives us x equals 18. You may notice the totals for each area of music have been included as subscripts, and this is just a helpful way to carry over the information. Then, for number three, the number of students who like rap only is four, and so the probability of randomly picking a student who likes rap only is four over 95. Next, find the probability of rap or hip hop. Now that we know x is 18, the number in R or H is 60 plus 18 plus 6, and so the probability is 84 over 95. And then finally, we have to find the probability of not jazz. This can be done in two ways, either by finding the number that do like jazz, which is 60, finding the probability of this, and then finding the complement by going 1 minus this probability to find the probability of not jazz, or by finding the number that don't do jazz, which is everything outside the circle, and finding the probability of that. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully Venn diagrams feel a little more approachable to you now. We encourage you to practice some examples in our grade 11 and 12 study guides to really get comfortable with all the ways it can be asked. Our next video in this series looks at tree diagrams. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.